So, so Corey calls me and he says, hey, I'd love you to come speak at this conference. Um, and I said, great, I'd be honored. But he didn't tell me that I was going to follow Carla Walker Miller and go before the governor. So <laughs> I'm a big fan of both. So let me jump right in. Um, first of all, does anybody recognize this place? Who's been to Hartwick Pines? Great. So if you haven't been there, you need to go. It's easy to get to. It's just north of Grayling, right off of 75. It's easy to get to. Next to Muir Woods, or right along with Muir Woods, it's one of my favorite forests, and it's just an amazing place. But it gets you thinking. It gets you thinking about what we used to have here, what's amazing, and it's funny how things line up when you don't know what people are speaking about. But I think everyone's familiar with what progress, civilization, farming, agriculture, industrialization did, and how we went about it with the white pine logging industry in Michigan. And it's amazing that at one time these lands, far before it was a state, 95% um, of Michigan was full of forests, which is kind of hard to wrap your head around, but that is what our state looked like. Fortunately, and you heard some of this from the director, we're on the right path. But I wanted to frame this a little bit because, and I saw this not that long ago, because I think about those forests, and I'm from the Upper Peninsula. Uh, any Upers in the house? There's got to be a couple of us. There we go. Just significantly minute changes in climate can affect the woods that we love and the lakes that we love. And, and I want to frame this as we talk about what the industry's doing. So I think many of you knew, know that the plan sets forth a very lofty and aspirational goal of putting and having two million electric vehicles on our roads by 2030. Long way to go, but a great target. So what I want to talk to you a little bit about today is some of the issues we're dealing with, some of the obstacles, but really some of the, the things that are really interesting and really innovative and really special to Michigan that are moving us forward. So this is one of my favorite business books. If you've read this book, you know, if you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. Andy Grove was one of the founders of Intel. He talks a lot about inflection points, and I love inflection points for one simple reason. You can't force your way through change. You either figure out how to take the upward trajectory or you become a victim of the downward trajectory, and electrification is that, uh, that inflection point for Michigan. Arguably one of the most significant, if not the most significant one, that this state has ever faced or will ever face. That sounds a bit uh, grandiose to state that, but I really, really feel it's true. So when we look at our industry, there's a couple things that are incumbent upon us and opportunity-wise, and there's a couple of drivers. First of all, we have a societal responsibility. We also have a huge economic opportunity, which I'll talk about. And there's two drivers here in this industry, and really you can argue in most industries, digitalization and sustainability. This is what it's all about right now. And my favorite example of that is the hometown team, or one of them, General Motors. Everything that they do follows the mission of zero, zero, zero. Zero congestion, zero emissions, zero accidents. It's almost a mantra, but it's certainly what drives product, what drives market, and what drives the company. And I give them a lot of credit. They're really sticking to the guns with this and bringing product to the market and walking the talk and everything that they do. General Motors fan over here. <laughs> the other thing that it has, it is, has huge economic opportunity. And this is, you have to apply this to Michigan too. The global auto industry is about a three and a half trillion dollar industry and it's projected to double that when you roll in connectivity, electrification, autonomous vehicles, and the shared economy. That is an incredible economic opportunity. Now, and the professor from Michigan State stated this very carefully, we make things, we have industry here, we have to make sure we cultivate it. Because trust me, those 12 assembly plants are the lifeblood of our state and our communities. They're absolutely essential that they be protected and grown. Now, three of them have electrification in progress or already make fully electric vehicles. 
and one of them is being redone right now, which I'll talk about. But eventually, and this will be a slow curve, the vision is that those 12 assembly plants and maybe some more make the vehicles that we're talking about in, in, this, in, this, in this healthy climate plan and, and the goal, the aspirational goal. Now the other thing I want to point out again is that digitalization for a couple reasons. It just continues to proliferate. 50% of the cost of a vehicle will be in the electronics. And when you roll in the electric propulsion system or a hybrid system, there's actually twice as many semiconductors in one of those systems than there are in an internal combustion engine system. Now this is a complicated, very, very dense ecosystem and I'm not going to break it down. I just think it's important to really understand that and to understand and respect how complicated it is. We have a dashboard at Mish Auto. It's an EV landscape. We keep track of some things. We are leading an investment. We're 25th in chargers per capita. Not bad, not great. Pretty much right in the middle. And we have four plants, again, that have converted over. Now, here's some of the issues that I'll just summarize real quick. One is supply chain. 91% of the batteries come from three countries and only a handful of companies. That's, that's a fact. Now, that's going to change, but this is an issue for us. Secondly, purchase cost. Right now, as most of you know, and I think a lot of you do drive them, they're not accessible to the masses. They have to be. Number three is the grid, and then there'll be a lot of conversation, I'm preaching to the choir with this, but particularly on the transmission side, that's something that doesn't get talked about a lot. But the one thing I really wanna stress real quickly is the mindset. The chamber just did a survey of 600 registered voters, very interesting results about their feelings towards electrification. And I'm only gonna pick one data point here, while there's support, 46% for what the automakers are doing in the transition, there's also 44% which are against it or don't understand it. So we have a shift in mindset that needs to occur. So let me tell you some of the things that encourage me, and I'll run through these real quick. One was last January, two Januarys ago now, and that investment in the Altium plant in Delta Township and the renewal and rebuild of the Orient Township. And frankly, the Orient Township plant might not have existed into the future if it weren't for this investment. So that would be 11, not 12. Secondly is the product. I mean, the product's incredible. They can't make enough F-150s fast enough. But when you look at even muscle cars, pickups, all the different vehicles that are being brought to life, born, created, and built here, designed and engineered here, they're pretty impressive. Gives me a lot of cause for optimism. Suppliers. I think you know this story. Mujib and his team have something special going on. They have a lot in front of them, but designing, engineering, and building batteries to reduce that reliance and make them here in Michigan is absolutely essential and pretty special. And to pick up on some of Carla's points, Natalie and, and her team at Dunamis here, now what this, I really believe this, I've been watching this, this intersection of the new energy economy and the automotive economy offers more opportunity for inclusion and diversity and other people to participate in than anything I've ever seen in my history in the career. And I think this is a great story and there will be more of them. And innovation. We have one of the most unique projects in the world going on here in Michigan that the governor announced last year between Electrion, Next Energy, and I give Jim Saver a lot of credit on this, and the different partners, MDOT included, to bring this to life. These are the types of things. I think many of you might know, and if you don't know, the first paved road highway was on Woodward Avenue in the United States. To think that we're developing a charged road seems pretty appropriate to me. And then up in the UP, okay, at the Keweenaw Research Center, or in Marquette, where Shophouse Park is coming to li life, this industry that's intersecting between outdoor rec tech and mobility is huge. It's not just the vehicles on the road are electrifying, the vehicles on the trails are too. I'm also encouraged by the amount of focus on talent. This is a busy chart, but I can tell you all these organizations are working on e-mobility and e-workforce transition. 
A lot of credit to Carrie Ebersol on the, uh, the talent action team and the MEDC and to Susan Corbin and the folks at Leo for a leading a lot here. And Lansing, very encouraged. Of course, we know the plan that we're here to talk about today, but the Office of Future Mobility and Electrification, the, newly, uh, the new four in the Auto Caucus, the different plans that have been put in place. And I've been through and really looked at all the line items in the governor's budget. They make sense and they're investments that we have to make because this industry needs help. Governments around the world are doing it. If we don't do it, we won't be able to get to where we want to get. So I'll leave you with a couple slides. This one is a picture we show a lot of people who don't understand the industry. On the left is the under the hood of an F-150. On the right is the frunk. Think about how much changes the suppliers, the, the, the people, the communities that are impacted by this transition. It's kind of summarized right there in this picture, in this graphic. So a couple takeaways, some things that we think about. Invest in our people, commit to infrastructure, understand and really be open to how complex this EV supply chain really is help our companies and communities pivot, support policy and investment that is visionary, that does not keep us where we're at, and really fund innovation. And we have to lead by example. And that means this industry that I work in, have my entire life almost, and the, the people in this room. Because we do have to have a mindset shift. I really believe that. So to follow with Mr. Grove, I'll just summarize by saying most companies insert team, insert individual, insert state of Michigan, don't die because they're wrong, they die because they don't commit. They fritter away their momentum and valuable resources while attempting to make a decision. The most dangerous thing is to stand still. I feel good that we're not standing still. And so, and I, that's due in a large part to the people in this room today. So, has anybody ever jumped, jumped off the rocks at Black Rocks? Right? I've done it a few hundred times in my life. I don't do it anymore because my heart would stop. But this is one of my favorite places in the world. And if, we're if it's not green and it's not blue into the future because we don't do what we need to do, particularly what this industry can do, then we won't have done our job. So thank you very much. I appreciate your time today.